What's up guys? I'm just squidding it up a little bit tonight. Going for a little ride, late night ride. Uh, I'm headed to Taco Bell. And if you've watched some of my earlier videos, if you watched the Across LA series, the episode on uh, fast food prices, then you'll know, you'll already know why I'm headed to Taco Bell. It's because I'm feeling really, really shitty. I've got a flu right now. I think it's a flu, actually. I don't know. It could be a flu or a cold. One or the other. But I'm feeling really sick. My girlfriend's been sick recently. And I've still been going to visit her uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, I like her a lot. And second of all, uh, when she's sick, uh, her family doesn't live too close to her. So if she's feeling bad, like she doesn't really have anybody nearby to take care of her. So I go by and sort of try and help make her feel better, cook for her, do a little cleaning, whatever she needs me to do. So I've been doing that, and in the meantime, I've been trying real hard not to catch whatever it is she's got, but there's only so much you could do when you spend a lot of time with somebody uh, in the same living space, so I don't know. I feel like I had my flu shot this year, and I've been taking a lot of emergency when I go to see her, like that vitamin C supplement stuff that you can take, and just trying to get enough sleep and everything so that I don't catch it, but I still feel like I've got a little something, so... Anyways, just to, you know, satisfy uh, the tradition that I've had ever since I was a little kid, I decided I'm going to go to Taco Bell and see if that helps me kick this bug. I don't think I have ever been sick since I was a little, little kid and not gone to Taco Bell. Uh, except, there, there's only one exception. There was one time I was really sick when I was living in Japan and they didn't have Taco Bell in Japan so I couldn't get any so I was feeling kind of sick and I just had to tough it out with no Taco Bell that was hard man that was a tough that was a tough bug to kick tough bug to kick actually when I was living in Japan I was surprised because I was living in I wasn't in Tokyo but I was like in a like a satellite community like a I don't know what do they call it like a bedroom community it's like a suburb of Tokyo, but I would always go into Tokyo, and it's like, it's a real international city, you know, you'll find people living there from all different places in the world, all different countries, you can find food from all different countries in the world, but one food they didn't have any of was Mexican food, and I don't know why, but it really surprised me, I mean, they had Brazilian food, they had whatever I mean you name it Korean food French food German food Chinese food American food everything you could think of except Mexican food it just kind of baffled me so anyway I'm sick now not feeling so good so I'm gonna head out to Taco Bell I was feeling kind of crappy so I didn't bother to put on all of my gear I got my helmet and my whatever these things are on my hands, I words are escaping me. I'm trying to take it easy a little bit here. Uh, I decided recently to, to sort of mellow out my riding a little bit because I've been feeling like my temper has been getting the best of me sometimes. When people do stupid stuff like when people endanger my life by driving stupid, like it makes me crazy. It makes me want to retaliate. And when you're on a motorcycle, that's just a really bad idea because you retaliating against the driver who's doing something stupid puts you in, in further danger. So I've been trying to rein in my emotions a little bit when I'm riding and it's, it's tough. It's tough for me because, I, I don't know, I just, I, I, it really pisses me off when people around me do what I perceive to be evil things. And it's one thing if somebody is driving uh, uh, carelessly and they do something st stupid, like just out of stupidity. And, you know, when that happens, I try to ignore it. You know, I just let it go. I'm like, well, they're stupid, they're incompetent, but at least, you know, they didn't do it on purpose, right? But when people do stuff that's like 
they look me right in the eye and then they just like still cut me off or still like run a red light in front of me like do a right turn on a red when I'm coming and knowing that I'm gonna have to hit the brakes for them because they just feel like I should have to be inconvenienced for their convenience that shit just really sets me off bad and I need to get it under control a little bit before I get myself into trouble so I'm trying to ride just like more with more chill out kind of an attitude so far so good last few days I've noticed actually it puts me like just willing myself just having the willpower to to chill out while I ride and not get mad at people and just kind of let them be assholes and let that be the life that they want to lead and not get sucked into it has been uh well for one thing keeping me out of trouble and for another thing it, it's been putting me in a better mood in general like I've in general been in a better mood lately so I, I think driving has a lot to do with it our lives these days especially if you live in a big commuter city like Los Angeles where you have to spend a lot of time on the road like driving will really 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 start to have a huge like I, I can't even explain how much of an impact traveling by mo private motor vehicle has on your quality of life I mean if you have a like if you're cruising along in your car and you've been having a great day and somebody just like cuts you off makes you slam on the brakes and like puts you in danger and maybe even puts like your passengers in danger and stuff like that it'll just like it'll kill your good day it'll ruin your day and I don't think that too many people really consider how much better their lives would be if they didn't have to put up with that and deal with it on a daily basis I actually used to love Taco Bell when I was little when I was in like junior high especially that was my favorite restaurant I used to love going to Taco Bell more than anything I'd get my like whatever my two or three dollars a week allowance and I guaranteed would spend it every week on Taco Bell and back then like two two bucks was enough to get you like a complete meal at Taco Bell because tacos and burritos were less than a dollar they were less than 50 cents those were the days those days are dead and gone so anyways here we are at our destination the Taco Bell I think I'm gonna have to go inside they won't let me go in the drive-thru on my little motor tricycle the lobby is actually closed, so only the drive through is open till midnight, so I'm going to have to give it a shot. Usually if you show up and you're not in a car, they won't serve you because they say it's for your safety. But really it's because too many people walk up to drive throughs or like bicycle or motorcycle up to drive throughs and like reach in the drive through window to like assault whoever's there and try and rob them and stuff. So they don't let you go through the drive-thru unless you're in a car so I'll have to try this out see if they'll let me purchase anything on my motor motor tricycle I sort of suspect that they won't but we'll see I guess my motorized tri-bicycle see what they have here shit has gotten out of control expensive See, I was talking on my way in here about how tacos were like 50 cents back in the day. Last, I think they were like 40 cents or something, 39 cents. Now a single regular crunchy taco is $1.20. What the fuck? So yeah, it's four times as expensive as when I was a little kid. Anyways, what do I want? Hi, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm still looking at the menu. Okay, I'm telling you. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. Can I get a combo burrito? Okay. A cheesy potato burrito? Alright. Uh, can you still do a Baja Gordita? Yeah. Can you do it as a, as a crunch style one? You want a cheesy Gordita crunch? Yeah, can you do that with the Baja sauce on it? Yeah, the Gordita crunch actually comes with the Baja sauce. Okay, perfect. And can I get a Baja Chalupa as well? I'll get it with steak, please. And I'm sorry for the gordita 
French has come put the flatbread to seize the crunchy taco with ground beef, baja sauce, lettuce, and cheese. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Anything to drink? No, right? No. That's going to be 11.29 seconds in the food. <laughs> Alright, thank you. You're welcome. Not this window. Hello. Hi. Alright. Uh oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, thank you. I would have came up to the window to check. Oh, is there like a sensor? Yeah. Okay. Can I get a bunch of... What's the hottest one you have? Fire. fire? Yeah, I'll get a bunch of fire. I forgot even what sauce they have. I haven't been here in so long. Thank you. Now I just gotta pull up to a spot so I can put this in my backpack. Gotta show you guys my cool new backpack. Alright, let's see what we got here. I went to a, uh, it's not a thrift store, it's kind of like a thrift store, it's like an army surplus store. But what they do is it's not really organized, it's like a gigantic warehouse and trucks literally come and just dump off shit loads like like literally huge truck loads of old army surplus stuff off at this warehouse and there's just piles and piles of stuff there and they had a special day where they let anyone go in because normally they do normally they only service uh, movie people like costumers and stuff but they were having a special day where they let anybody go in there. It was a one time only thing. And I was looking for a new backpack or a used backpack, I guess, because I've been dealing with this bag on my motorcycle that's uh, like a messenger bag. So it's only got one strap on it. And that's not super great because it's lately it's been starting to wear on my back a lot more. It's been hurting my back to have all the weight just on one side. And I wanted a bag that has a strap on both sides, finally. And I know the military makes good stuff, so I wanted a army surplus backpack. And actually, they didn't have anything in the warehouse. Oh yeah, I forgot to finish describing this warehouse because it's freaking crazy. Like, the trucks literally drop off these pallets full of stuff. And the, they don't tr even try to organize it or wash it or anything. It's actually pretty disgusting in there. It's a huge like downtown warehouse, like sprawling warehouse, like a like maybe two or three hundred yards long and like a hundred yards wide. And it's just like literally mountains and mountains and mountains, like eight foot tall piles of shit just stacked up. God knows what's on the bottom of it. And if you see something you want and it's like 10 or 15 feet away from you in one of those huge piles, like you just literally have to climb up in those piles and go get what you want. And it's just disgusting because there's like mold and dust and God knows what from like battlefields and shit in there because none of it's been washed before they deliver it. So it's just nasty in there. And there's like some really cool stuff. Some of my friends found like old uniforms that like the tank crew would wear. Like uh, Belgian tanker suits, I think the guy called it, who worked there. He was like, yeah, these are tanker suits. So the dudes who would drive the tanks, Belgian troops, Belgian tank troops would wear these suits pretty cool stuff like old officers coats and hats and stuff you can find so there's cool stuff in there it's just like you got to wade through this nasty like pile of disgusting disease ridden shit to find it and then you got to wash it off yourself and uh, for better or worse I actually didn't find a backpack in there but since it was a special day they had attracted like proper vendors of new stuff so I actually got this backpack new and it was only 40 bucks and it's a really nice backpack it's a good good piece it's huge like the volume is twice as big as my old shoulder bag ever was and uh, it's got tons of little pouches and straps for adding stuff it's got like a velcro strip so that you can add like name tape to it i think i'm gonna get a little piece of name tape for uh my youtube channel i'll get a little piece of name tape that says motor merc throw it on there Let's let this emergency get get under out of the out of the way. Uh, I just needed something that was more comfortable and could carry enough stuff to you know handle my commuting by motorcycle. And I like it. It has a lot of different pouches. It it, it can carry a lot of different stuff. 
uh, and I just like uh, I like having two straps again. It's really nice, and I'm really happy with it because it also has like a, a, a couple of stabilizer straps on the front to sort of settle it and to get some of the weight off of your shoulders and onto your like midsection on your core. So it's it's just really nice. The way the weight is distributed on my body is really good too. And I also just think it looks cool, man. I like the, the, the camo look, the digital camo, the squared off camo look. Actually, I'll just be honest, uh, I saw that Baker X Derek had one of these bags and I'm kind of a Baker X Derek fanboy and I thought it would be cool to have one. So, uh, you know, it, it wasn't my intention. I wasn't looking for this bag when I went to the Army Surplus store, but when I saw that they had it there, I decided I wanted to buy it right away. So it carries enough stuff, it's durable, it's got a lot of patches for organizing your, your junk. It's good, it's just a good piece. And for 40 bucks, I figured I couldn't go wrong because a lot of the other motorcycling bags you can get, like, they're not necessarily more durable or more waterproof or anything. This bag's uh, weatherproof. It's got like a tarp liner on the inside so the water won't get through the fabric. Yeah, like the, the, the expensive like $80, $100 backpacks you could get from for supposedly purpose-built for motorcycling aren't any better. They're, they definitely don't carry more volume and a lot of the like purpose-built bicycling backpacks and stuff are like $150, $200. So I figured for 40 bucks to get like a proper military bag. I don't regret my purchase at all. I actually regret not wearing my gear just because it's so cold out and my riding jacket's a lot warmer than this little windbreaker I wore instead. But anyway, I'm almost home. It's just, a, just another mile or so and I'll be home. So I'm gonna check out here and I will catch you guys in the next uh, Cali Coast special series video. Peace.